would like to call to order this regular school board meeting of Osceola Area Schools, uh, ISD 279, uh, at 6.08 p.m. on Tuesday, June 19th, 2018. Uh, let's uh, start with the roll call, and I will have everyone just say their name. So, Jim Brigette. Mike Osnafi. Heather Douglas. Jessica Craig. Kate McGuire. Uh, Director Henke uh, is not here this evening. He had a prior commitment uh, up in the North Woods in a fishing pole. And uh, Director Fortner had a, uh, uh, had a prior engagement with her newborn daughter. So congratulations to her. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, does anyone have any additions to the agenda this evening? No? Hearing none, I would like to uh, make a motion to accept the agenda as written. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Director Craig. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, the agenda is accepted, four to zero. Uh, we now come to the audience opportunity to address the board. I see no cards and I see no one looking to address the board. So we will move on to the superintendent's report. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. A regular part of the superintendent's report is to share points of pride. Points of pride celebrate students, staff, and community members who are contributing to the accomplishment of our mission, which is to inspire and prepare all students with the confidence, courage, and competence to achieve their dreams, contribute to community, and engage in a lifetime of learning. And I've asked cabinet members to share those points of pride tonight. In the category of achieving dreams, after advancing through regional and state tournaments, four teams of students from Osseo area schools Competed in the Destination Imagination Global Finals in Knoxville, Tennessee in late May. Special congratulations go out to Maple Grove and Osseo Senior High students Aaron Fesser, Jess Bray, Adamson Novak, and James Pipkin for claiming their first world title in the Secondary Level Fine Arts Challenge. They're pictured here with team manager Jody Kinneberg, music teacher at Maple Grove Middle School. Paige Faber, a 2018 graduate of Maple Grove Senior High, was named Player of the Year by the Minnesota Adapted Athletics Association. During her six-year athletic career with the CI Adapted Teams in Osseo Area Schools, Faber served as captain of the softball, soccer, and floor hockey teams, earned 17 varsity letters, and won 12 all-conference awards. She also notched more than 100 goals and 100 assists in both soccer and floor hockey, the first District 279 athlete to accomplish this feat. Two fifth graders from Fernbrook Elementary were honored on May 24th for winning the elementary division of the stock market game. Throughout the 2017-2018 school year, Alexander Jasek and Maddox Van Sluten invested their virtual 100,000 in companies like Amazon, and Netflix and had more than 130,000 in their portfolio when the game was over. For more than 40 years, students in grades 4 through 12 from across the U.S. have played the stock market game. More than 120 students from all three comprehensive high schools earned state bilingual or multilingual proficiency awards in Hmong, French, Spanish, and Mandarin this spring. Students' performance on language assessments also makes them eligible to receive college credit at Minnesota State Colleges and Universities. The New York Times recently announced its fifth annual student editorial contest winners, and a Maple Grove senior high student made the list. Studi Aurora received honorable mention accolades for her essay titled, Why Aren't More Girls Pursuing Careers in Computing and Tech Fields? Studi's essay was among the top 74 entries out of nearly 9,300 essay submissions from stu students around the world. Last week, the Maple Grove Senior High Boys Golf Team captured its first ever state title at Bunker Hills Golf Course. Over the two days of competition, the Crimson recorded a score of 593, seven strokes better than runner-up 
from St. Thomas Academy and runners up from Alexandria High Schools. <coughs> Graduates from the class of 2018 were offered more than $15 million in scholarships from local and national nonprofits, businesses, higher education institutions, and other organizations. Three grads are National Merit Scholarship finalists who received college-sponsored scholarships from the University of Minnesota. Maple Grove's Ethan Donaldson and Ashvin Pittaparty and Osseo's David Wynn. A brother-sister duo from Osseo Senior High took home some hardware from the state track and field meet earlier this month. Tyler Seelock, a 2018 graduate, took second place in the boys' 300-meter hurdles, while junior Kelsey Seelock placed third in the girls' 300-meter hurdles. Brush Creek Elementary student Sawyer B. Ugestad was recognized as a national second grade winner in this year's Continental Mathematics League competition. Continental Mathematics League, or CML, is a national problem solving competition. Sawyer achieved perfect scores, scores on all three of his CML tests this year. Osseo Senior High students Emma Hauser and Ricky Chan Thu Vong received the Judge's Choice Spotlight on the Arts Award at the 2018 Minnesota State High School League Visual Arts Festival. In addition to Emma's and Ricky's accolades, 38 students from Maple Grove, Osseo, and Park Center participated in the festival and earned a Superior and Excellence Awards. In the category of Contributing to Community, for nearly 10 years, Osseo Area Schools has collaborated on the Connections at Shingle Creek Trail Project with community partners, including Hennepin County, the cities of Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center, the Shingle Creek Watershed Management Organization, and the Three Rivers Park District. Through this project and community partnership, students have access to outdoor learning spaces near Brooklyn Middle School and Park Center Senior High. Brooklyn Middle Principal Kim Monet, Assistant Principal Megan Halbleck, and STEAM teacher Dana Trout participated in the ribbon cutting ceremony last month. In May, volunteers from the Brooklyn Park Rotary, KPMG, SEEP, and the Brooklyn Park Police and Fire Departments spent a morning reading to students at Park Brook Elementary. This event was part of Brooklyn Park Rotary, KPMG, Reading in the Schools Day. For more than a decade, the Rotary and KPMG have partnered to provide Parkbrook students with books multiple times per year. Our next category is lifelong learning. With their tackle boxes in tow, <laughs> 10 fifth grade girls from Elm Creek Elementary headed to Weaver Lake on June 4th for their official outing with the Elm Creek Fishing Club. Led by fourth grade teacher Dan Baker, this opportunity allowed students to experience fishing, some for the first time. Prior to the trip, members met four times after school to learn about boat safety, fishing equipment, and techniques. Several community partners, including Tuned Up Custom Rods, Clam Outdoors, and local guide Larry Hansen, provided equipment and expertise to support this unique opportunity for students. Zanewood Community School students spent part of their time this spring preparing for the Grow Our Program plant sale. Students planted seeds for various herbs after spring break and then monitored their growth. During the two-day sale on May 24th and 25th, Zanewood scholars raised more than $500 to help fund STEAM programming for the 2018-19 school year. Nearly 200 Osseo Area Schools adult basic education students participated in the Community Academy program offered by the Joint Community Police Partnership. Through this program, students met with police officers and attended meetings where they learned about topics like personal safety, healthy relationships, and traffic laws. The purpose of this program is to improve safety and livability throughout local communities and Hennepin County. In the category of mission-driven employees, Palmer Lake Elementary's Chuck Waltz was featured on the Minnesota Bound TV program on June 10th. Waltz, a third grade teacher, has transformed his classroom into an outdoor-themed learning studio. A fishing boat, ice house, and other elements allow students to choose from several flexible seating options, providing them with opportunities to learn in a more comfortable setting. Julie Stobbs, second grade teacher at Oakview Elementary, was named a WCCO TV Excellent Educator this spring. Nominated by her students, Mrs. Stobbs with, was presented with her award on camera in her classroom. In their nomination, the second graders described their beloved teacher as 
super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Students and staff at Palmer Lake Elementary gathered on June 1st to officially open the school's new track, named the Teats Track, uh, in memory of former teacher Greg Teats. Linda Broberg, a retiring physical education teacher at Palmer Lake, said generous support for the Palmer, from Palmer Lake VFW, Brooklyn Park Rotary, and the Teats family helped make the track a reality. Students celebrated by running a ceremonial first lap. Before retiring this spring, elementary band teacher Kevin Razor brought more than 100 of his former students back together to play one final time on May 16th. Razor said the alumni are now in high school, college, and beyond, including some who are band directors themselves. Razor inspired nearly four decades of students and was featured on CCX News, where he reflected on his 36-year career with District 279. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll finish up with three celebrations. First, I'll begin by sharing our biggest celebration of the year, which is high school graduation. On June 9th, about 1,400 seniors from all of our high schools participated in commencement ceremonies at Mariucci Arena. Each commence commencement event featured student speakers, musical performances, recognition of student honors, and the presentation of diplomas. Our district Facebook site features a commencement photo album for each of our three comprehensive high schools. While graduates from our area learning center sometimes participate in these commencement ceremonies, separate ceremonies are also held at the ALC throughout the year as students complete their requirements. Uh, next, in addition to celebrating students who are leaving our system, we also recently celebrated staff members who are retiring from our district. The school board hosted a celebration for teachers, administrators, education support professionals, custodians, nutrition services, and other staff members who are retiring. The class of 2018 retirees collectively have worked for the school district for 2,329 years. Many of this year's retirees, 70% in fact, have served the students and families of Osseo area schools for, more, for 20 years or more. And then lastly, I just want to recognize two cabinet members who are leaving our school system, and tonight is their last school board meeting. Judy McDonald is retiring from Osseo Area Schools. Uh, again? Again. Again. <laughs> again. That's right. Wow. I think the first time may just have been a practice run, which really doesn't bode well for the rest of us who are <laughs> trying that. I, uh, I just want to throw it out there that just in case you want to come back, We'll, we'll keep your seat kind of warm. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and Dr. Kim Hiles leaving us after three years, one as principal at Zanewood and two as assistant superintendent to lead Fridley Public Schools next, beginning July 1. As a matter of fact, she's leaving here at about 7 o'clock to go to a Fridley school board meeting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but heard it. you heard it here. You're that friendly? It's on <laughs> tape. It's on tape. The heart is here. I want to thank Kim and Judy for their service to our district and wish them well in their next uh, journeys. Thank you. Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now start Mr. with... Mr. Chair. What's that? Mr. Chair. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought it was Kate. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I, didn't see, I didn't see anything on our agenda, but we, um, as a school board, need to recognize Dr. Kate McGuire for oh, her thanks. services mm -hmm. here in our district. 34 years, is it? Mm -hmm. 33. Uh, mm -hmm. 33. Um, we may not have always seen eye to eye, but there's no doubt that you've given your heart, your time, and dedication to the mm -hmm. families of this district, and we're grateful for that. Thank so you very much. We wish you well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I was going to do that at the end, but, you know. Oh, <laughs> my apologies. See I, if she can get through without crying. I you know, so. <laughs> I didn't see it. So no, I it's not on there. Okay. <laughs> a, a, any, anyone else? Uh, I just, I, I couldn't have said it any better than uh, Jessica did, but um, uh, I think, you know, if you ever want to help us facilitate any board meetings, <laughs> we'd be happy to have you. You're really good at getting us out on time. <laughs> <laughs> But um, we'll, we'll miss you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair. Yeah, sure. Um, absolutely. I can't, um, it's hard for me to imagine the district without you, but um, I think it's your impact on the system and on me personally has been um, significant. So thank you very much for all that you've done for all of us. We will miss you. And uh, I wanted to thank all three of you. Uh, Judy and Dr. Heil and Dr. McGuire, 
Uh, you, you've all given quite a bit to this district, and thank you very much. Uh, your seats uh, will uh, be filled with effort, so uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for all of your hard work. Thank you. thank you. Mr. Chair, I just would like to say thank you in return to our board members and my team members. Um, you know, it, it has just been an amazing journey, and it's because of the um, students and the wonderful community members that we serve and the staff members and board members, right, for years and years and years. And um, I just want you to know that I appreciate it. It's been a tremendous opportunity. I'm looking forward to the next part of my journey, and I'll watch you next from my living room couch with my feet up on Tuesday night on television. <laughs> uh, but I want, I want to thank you. It's been a tremendous opportunity, and the staff and students and community members of District 279, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we will go with the school board reports, the May 22nd policy committee meeting. Uh, Director Burgett. The policy committee met on Tuesday, May 22nd at 6 p.m. here at the Educational Service Center. Present for the meeting were board members Mike Ostofsky and Heather Douglas. Also present were Superintendent Kate McGuire, General Counsel Tim Palmatier, Director of Transportation Troy Schreifels, Coordinator of Transportation Sean McNeilan, and RAA Coordinator Tim, Tom Watkins. The committee reviewed Transportation Policy 707 and the appendices to policy. The committee considered revisions to the policy recommended by the Transportation Department. Thereafter, the committee proposed the revised policy for first reading at tonight's board meeting. The committee also discussed the adoption of policy 520 concerning student surveys. This proposed policy was initially discussed by the committee during the 2016-17 school year. However, at the direction of the policy committee, the Department of Research, Assessment, and Accountability, RAA, sought additional feedback from parents within the district concerning the, new, the proposed new policy. After considering parent input, RAA presented the new policy with minor revisions to the committee at the May 22nd meeting. After discussion of the proposed new policy, the committee recommended that it be presented for first reading at tonight's meeting. Finally, the committee began review of policy 506 regarding student discipline. However, due to anticipated changes to the Pupil Fair Dismissal Act, the committee agreed to continue its review of the policy at the next policy committee meeting. The next policy committee meeting is scheduled to be held on September 25th, 2018 here at ESC. Meetings of the committee are open to the public and interested persons within the district are encouraged to attend. Director Craig. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The school board held a work session on Tuesday, June 5th, 2018. School board members learned about progress on approved strategic priorities for the current school year. Staff provided information about progress on continuous improvement of implementation of the middle level program, efforts to equip teachers with culturally responsive instructional strategies, development of new equity foundational training, and efforts to address the needs of multilingual learners. Board members provided direction on strategic priorities for 2018-19 and will take action on those strategic priorities at tonight's meeting. In addition, staff members provided information regarding the fiscal year 2019 budget proposal, along with a five-year projection for the General Operating Transportation Fund, the Food Service Fund, the Community Service Fund, and the Capital Fund. For the General Operating Transportation Fund, revenues are up by 3.36% and expenditures are up by 3.34% from the previous year. There is, this results in a fund balance as a percent of expenditures of 25.12%, which meets the board's minimum requirement of 5%. The school board asked clarifying questions and at the conclusion of the meeting, the board directed staff to prepare the budget for action at tonight's meeting. All school board work sessions are open to the public and are also audio taped. Members of the public can access audio recordings of work sessions on our district website. Thank you, Director Craig. Uh, are there any other reports? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number, number seven, which is the presentation of the long-term facilities maintenance update by Patricia Magnuson, Daryl Karlstrom, and Jeff Arthurs. Welcome. Good evening, Chair Ostafi, school board members, and Superintendent McGuire. The purpose of this presentation tonight is to provide you with an update regarding the district's long-term facilities maintenance, or LTFM, project plan. 
Dale Carlstrom, who is the Director of Facilities and Transportation Operations, and Jeff Arthurs, who is the Coordinator of Custodial and Maintenance Services, will provide a brief overview of our overall LTFM strategy and information about the projects that are currently underway for the summer of 2018. I will then provide an update regarding how we are thinking about the coordination of LTFM projects with possible future construction that might emerge from the enrollment and capacity management op option development. And then we'll prepare the board for our next steps in our ongoing LTFM plan. So we'll start with Dale Carlstrom. Good evening, Chair Osafi, board members, and Superintendent McGuire. This evening, uh, Jeff Arthurs and I will be providing an update on our long-term facility maintenance projects and planning. Our current board approved plan addressed both current and anticipated deferred maintenance needs over time to ensure that our facilities are able to meet the needs of our students and the community. Our facilities uh, total 3.8 million square feet and our 32 facilities range in age from 16 years to 66 years. The board approved LTFM 10 year plan is comprehensive and over time addresses every facility in the district. It is in keeping with our strategy to leverage and align the talents of our employees and the assets of our system to achieve our mission and the strategic objectives. We know that a clean, well-maintained facility impacts learning. Well-maintained facilities contribute to improved air quality, sound quality, lighting quality, and safety. In addition, well-maintained facilities contribute to a positive school culture and climate. Chair Staffy, members of the board, Superintendent McGuire. Um, as you may have already heard, the 10-year the facilities plan is expected to impact all of our buildings over time. However, we are pleased to announce tonight that after the first two years of the plan, we've completed at least one project at every one of our facilities. Um, our comprehensive restoration plan covers several components of our facilities. Our site work, windows, roofing, building envelope, interior finishes, flooring, plumbing mechanical systems, and electrical and lighting. We have successfully completed the projects from the summer of 2017 and the summer of 2018 projects are in full swing. We are in the process of making collaborative decisions for the summer of 2019 projects so that we can begin the design development process. Our objective is to have the summer 2019 projects designed and ready to bid by the end of December of 2018. As we discussed in March, our first year projects have wrapped up and we are able to keep the projects on budget. The, the year two of the plan, we are managing $31 million in projects and the four major products, projects total approximately $20 million of that $31 million. As an example of the work underway, pictured here is the boiler room at Northview Middle School. In the foreground are the four new condensing boilers that replace the 1970s vintage steam boiler in the background. We have made significant progress in the demolition and asbestos work on all the major projects and we are happy to report that the contractors and all are all doing great and the projects are under uh, are well underway and the and their coordination and schedule is on time and in 2017 the school board approved a plan to create a new construction design and management approach that brought more accountability to the process we brought in owners and representatives and split out the, the work for architectural, mechanical, electrical, commissioning, and testing and balancing. 
We have taken measures to assess the impact of the long-term facility maintenance work and the management strategy we are employing. To help measure the impact of the LTFM work on energy use, we contacted a third party to establish a benchmark for our district utility use. Comparing our results against our benchmark districts, our results for the first year have been very favorable. We are anticipating a cost avoidance in energy use of over 20%, which will equate to 700 to $1 million, 700,000 to $1 million. When we established the new construction management approach, we agreed to conduct an evaluation of the professional partners in each area. We use the evaluation process to inform our decisions for choosing design partners and for adjusting process and procedure related to construction project management. I'm confident that the collaborative process has brought high quality partners to the table and will keep our pro projects on time and on budget. The board decision to contract our owner's representative has improved our process and outcomes in several ways. We have staff committed to overseeing the day-to-day -day work and keeping the LTFM oversight committee informed. We have developed a comprehensive record keeping process which helped us control costs and stay on budget. The project oversight committee is looking critically at our practices and procedures and made a necessary changes that continue to improve our results. One example of such change is the debrief that site leaders with site leaders that has led to changes in our communication strategies that will keep site leaders and site staff better informed. As part of my job to manage the day-to-day -day operations for the district, uh, I see a direct impact on this LTFM work and how it relates to our, our maintenance staff. Um, when I did a um, I pulled the report to see what the impact was on the three elementary schools that we con reconstructed last summer, Zanewood, Parkbrook, and Garden City. Uh, we saw a 60% reduction in work orders for those three sites alone on our HVAC systems. Um, our new systems are reliable and efficient. Um, these sin significant building improvements have enabled our district maintenance staff to provide faster response time um, to other buildings within our district. As you know, all of our buildings are aging and it's important that we keep them up to speed. Um, further evidence of our value of our investments um, in addressing deferred maintenance needs can be seen in our work order statistics. In the fall of 2014, we had 2,200 open work orders. Um, response time was measured in months and morale was low among all stakeholders, including staff, the community members, uh, and our students. Today, I'm happy to report we are under 200 work orders. And we average, although we average 15 new requests each day, our maintenance team, district maintenance team is able to respond promptly. Uh, most importantly, we have received fewer calls reporting hot or cold classrooms, which allows our students to focus on learning instead of on their comfort concerns. As we began this, the 2018 school year, students expressed that they are proud of their improvements to their school and they feel good about the board's leadership and our community's investment in our aging facilities. We will now provide an overview of this summer's work. I will talk about the large scale projects and Jeff will describe the projects our facilities team is managing. Our large scale school initiatives for the summer are at Park Center High School, Oakview Elementary, Osseo Middle School, and Northview Middle School. The primary focus at Park Center Senior High School for Phase 2 will be mechanical, plumbing, student restroom renovations, and student support in the student support areas and the three-story tower. At Oakview, we will focus on the HVAC system, the heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems, in the classrooms and the duct work supporting the, the variable air volume systems. At Osseo Middle School, work is in the second phase and will focus on the completion of the boiler room renovation and the heating systems in the classrooms of the two-story wing. We will be eliminating the unit ventilators in the classrooms and installing induction displacement units similar to those 
installed in the three elementary schools last summer. The project also includes some major renovations to pool locker rooms and pool finishes. There will be renovations to the lower level uh, physical education boys and girls locker rooms as well. The Northview Middle School Phase 1 project replaces one of the boilers, added, adds a chiller plant, installs hydronic piping through the length of the building to the two-story where it will provide new equipment in mechanical rooms supporting the classrooms in the two-story. The, the first phase will address uh, restoration to the floor finishes, casework, doors, paint, ceilings, and the first floor of, on the first floor of the two-story. We have entered into a partnership with Osseo, um, Osseo Maple Grove Hockey Association to restore the ice arena mechanical systems and the finishes in the arena locker rooms and, and in, the, in the arena itself and in the locker rooms. While we have a significant amount of work in our large scale projects, we have approximately $12 million in our in-house projects that, facility, that the facilities team is managing. The project management work, uh, work that the ICS is, uh, that ICS is doing, our owner's representative, is on the major projects has allowed us to keep moving forward with significant amount of LTFM work in several critical areas. Jeff will describe the work that his team is doing to improve our facilities and grounds. This summer and the coming months, we expect to complete around 90 different jobs. Um, some of the upgrades that we've been doing and we'll be continuing to do our uh, LED gym lighting and upgrades to our LED technologies throughout our buildings. Um, some of those sites include Northview, Zanewood, Birch Grove, Woodland, Basswood, and Rush Creek. Um, we are improving site lighting at Maple Grove Senior High and uh, ESC. Um, the Maple Grove Middle School Auditorium is also getting new LED lights um, and interior lighting across the district in various locations. Um, as you noted earlier, the energy savings that we've seen have um, these LED lights have a big impact on that as well, so we hope to continue that. Um, floor finishes, we're continuing our floor finishing work, and uh, we have about 30 different projects just with that alone. So we've been able to um, do a lot of different work at a lot of different buildings and keep uh, give everybody happy and do a lot of different things. So uh, some of the notable projects, uh, Osseo Area Learning Center, Maple Grove Middle School, Palmer Lake, Birch Grove, Fair Oaks, um, Brooklyn Middle School, Basswood, Weaver, uh, we are continuing on with our painting initiatives, uh, painting three buildings a year approximately, uh, including Oakview, Willow Lane, and Birch Grove, um, and gym floor sanding at Osseo Senior High Maple Grove Middle School. Uh, we are continuing on with our rekeying initiative for classroom securities at Brooklyn Middle School. Uh, I think we're down to three sites left in the district, um, so that will continue on a one per year basis. And uh, we're replacing lockers at Fair Oaks and Weaver Lake. Uh, mechanical equipment, various locations throughout the district, including our uh, controls and building automation upgrades. And at Osseo Senior High, we are expecting to do some site work, including tennis court rehabil rehabilitation and our track um, repairs. Um, roof system replacement at Garden City. And um, although these self-managed projects allow us to address uh, facility improvement needs throughout the district, um, we were able to touch a lot of different sites, so that's really great. Thank you. You guys are busy <laughs> this summer, and a lot of projects are underway. So this year, um, something new um, is emerging, and that's our coordination with our Enrollment and Capacity Management Advisory Committee work. Our LTFM plan, it's a 10-year rolling plan that gets updated every year. And it's happening um, in the future um, concurrent with, some of, um, with our ECMAC work. We are currently developing options that might impact building construction as a result of the items surfaced by the Enrollment and Capacity Management Advisory Committee. So options like 
building a new school or constructing an addition or expansion of a school, if those options um, are surfaced from our work, they will have to be coordinated with our LTFM projects. What we are doing is being mindful of the projects that we prioritize beginning next year and into the future so that we avoid redundancy of work or reconstruction of work. Um, so we are working very hard to coordinate and try to plan ahead. While our work continues this summer on our LTFN projects, as Dale said, we are well underway for planning our summer 2019 projects. We know that recommendations for potential construction projects that emerge from our ECMAC work will have an influence on our timing. And again, that ongoing 10-year plan will allow us to, to continue with um, progress toward the completion of critical deferred maintenance projects, those types of projects that Jeff was describing, while we keep looking toward our potential future construction projects that might occur. So we're coordinating all of that and trying to think ahead and be mindful. There are some next steps, and we want to be sure that the board knows what to expect in the coming weeks and months. And so I'm going to go back and sort of review what a full year process looks like. Because with the summer of 2018, we're now completing that initial two-year process. And if you recall, it was preceded by an extensive planning process that the board influenced greatly. Um, and this initial two-year cycle included 2017 summer's projects, last summer, and the current year um, 2018 summer projects. We spent several months back in 2016 completing our facility analysis and fine-tuning our project implementation and financing plan that includes a, an annual levy and a bond issue in, in two-year cycles. We, are, we prepared a structure of accountability that we've been working with, and we awarded our initial bond sale back in 2016. And then over a year ago, we took our first bids for the summer of 2017 projects, which were substantially completed last fall under budget, as Dale has described. The board awarded project bids throughout this last winter um, from about January through March, and staff completed our initial vendor evaluation as part of our structure of accountability. And this yellow highlighted area, you can barely see it, but it indicates our current phase of that first two-year cycle of work that Jeff and Dale described. So this, this initial two-year cycle will co be completed later this fall when our projects are substantially complete. So we're going to then repeat that pattern over the next two years. So we are underway for the beginning of planning for this second two-year cycle, and that will be projects that will be completed next summer, summer of 2019, and then the following summer of 2020. So again, we're at the beginning of the second two-year cycle, so that yellow highlight there on the outside of that box indicates where we're at. We are currently updating our 10-year project plan, being mindful of potential future construction emerging from our ECMAC recommendations. The 10-year plan is annually approved by the school board in July, and design work for anticipated projects in the summer of 2019 needs to get underway very soon so that we can get bids out um, early next year. We will continue to work with our financial advisor, Ellers and Associates, to, be, to begin preparing for our second bond issue that will be coming up, and we expect all of that to occur later this year, and as usual, the tax levy process will take place this fall. So then we will plan to bid projects for summer 19 and award those later this winter, and then we expect to be back here in the summer of 2019 with an update on those first year of projects in our second two-year cycle. So this, the really concrete next steps that we have for, for the, the coming months are that in July, so next month on July 31st, we'll be back with an update of our 10-year revenue plan and our 10-year expenditure plan. And we will also at that time have the District 287 plan as well in those two areas. In September, we'll bring forward the preliminary tax levy, so that annual levy includes a portion of the funding for summer 19 projects. And then later in the fall, we expect to bring a, a resolution of intent for our next bond issue. And then we'll, we will um, accept the second LTFM bond sale in the fall as well. And then in December, the board will approve the final tax levy 
for taxes payable in 2019, and that will complete the funding for our summer 2019 projects. So I want to thank you again for your support of this important work. It maintains our community's investment in our facilities. So at this time, any of us can take questions you might have. Mr. Chair? Mr. Burgett? Um, <clears throat> I'd like to call uh, our, everyone's attention to three things that popped out at me from your presentation that I just want to thank you and celebrate. First thing, correct me if I'm wrong on any of these, but I thought I heard over 20% reduction or cost avoidance that could be up to a million dollars a year. Is that correct? And that's one of those things that keeps on giving. It's okay. this year and next year and the next year. So that is huge and goes on to the future. So thank you very much for keeping your eyes on, on, that, on those goals. That's wonderful. The other thing was, of course, the reduction in work orders and backlog from somewhere in the 2,000 range to under 200, that's wonderful. And keeping it low, that's really great service and that helps throughout the whole organization and reduces frustration levels. That's, that's wonderful. And then, of course, the last one that I, that I noted was projects completed under budget. That's something that's so unusual yeah, <laughs> in many places. So I just wanted to celebrate those three things to illustrate the good work in management that's going on in execution. So thank you very much. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for all your hard work. And it's been um, an incredible journey seeing all this happen and transpire, especially the work with ECMAC um, and getting to be a part of that team. Also, I heard, um, I heard you say something about, about 15 orders per day and they're being responded to promptly. And I thought that was really important because also one of the other things that you talked about was um, morale. And that is really, really important in making sure that our students and staff feel comfortable in their workplace and where they're learning and um, just feeling like somebody knows this is happening and somebody's addressing it can make a world of difference um, in the lives of the people who are dealing with those situations, even if they might may seem small or insignificant, they m mean a lot to the people who are dealing with them. So I really appreciate the effort and um, keeping that in the forefront of, of the work that you're doing. So thank you. Thank you, Director Douglas. Director Gregg. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would, all good points. Jim caught everything that I caught as well. Um, and I wanted to thank you for the increased accountability that comes along with the new process. Um, it's reaping rewards. It's a great thing. So thank you so much. And I know that the uh, coming in under budget wasn't just our 2017, but it's been fairly consistent that you've come in under budget and that shows great management you're a stickler on some things, so thank you very much for your hard work. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. And I wanted to comment. I've been involved in a lot of industrial maintenance activities in the past, and what I see is an investment in reducing emergency maintenance needs and cleaning up the backlog of standard maintenance needs. That's going a long way to reduce costs in the future. Emergency projects are more costly, uh, are, are done probably more poorly, and they, you know, again, they cost a heck of a lot more than when you plan for it, and we're planning for it, and we're getting it done, and we're making the right amount of investment compared to years past. So uh, it, it's going to have a lot of long-term payoff that we may not necessarily see directly, but in future maintenance budgets, you are going to see that you're not going to have all these emergency projects because we're taking care of it in a planful manner. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. So next up is item number eight on the agenda, the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda as is? Uh, so. Second. So moved. So, moved. so moved. Okay. I'll move it. <laughs> I think uh, uh, motion by Director Burgett. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Director Douglas. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. The consent agenda passes four to zero. Next up on the agenda uh, is number nine, our action items. 
Uh, and the first one uh, is a resolution authorizing execution of legal documents regarding dissolution for ties. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, move forward with that. And this is going to be a little different. So I am moving for a roll call vote be taken to approve the resolution in action item number 9A authorizing execution of legal documents regarding dissolution for ties. Is there a second? Second. Second by uh, Director Douglas. Uh, so this is a roll call vote. So we're going to vote by name. So uh, Director Burgett, yay or nay? Yay or aye. Aye, okay. Uh, Director Craig. Aye. Director Douglas. Aye. And myself, Director Ostafi, yes or aye. So the motion passes four to zero, or the resolution passes uh, with four votes in the affirmative, zero votes in uh, the negative, and uh, no abstentions. The motion passes. Uh, number 9B is the fiscal year 2019 budget uh, presented by Kelly Benusa. And Patricia Magnuson. Good evening again, everyone. Um, tonight we bring forward for your consideration the fiscal year 2019 proposed budget. This budget, by its process design, is directly linked to our strategic plan and provides resources necessary to support our strategic priority work. The Long Range Financial Planning, or another acronym, LRFP, <laughs> process is very transparent and it's collaborative in its approach and it incorporates several stops along the way to receive feedback and direction from the school board. The budget before you incorporates all of the school board's input. We thank you for your attention to this work so that we can bring forward a budget for which you are well prepared. Budget decisions are made using the long-range financial planning framework, which includes a financial forecasting model that provides the basis of our budget planning for financial sustainability. The school board engaged in several work sessions throughout the budget development process, and at your February 13th work session, the board carefully considered the budget recommendation and the LRFP advisory team's assessment of their impact. This is a summary version of our LRFP framework. What the framework does is provide coherence between our system's strategic plan and the allocation of resources through the collaboration of budget managers. And it describes the direction by the school, um, that is provided by the school board. This is the sixth year that the LRFP process is being used in planning for the general transportation operating funds and the fifth year for all of our other funds. Our budget planning, approval, and implementation, we want to have you think about it as a continuous process, and we follow a similar timeline every year. The school board approves strategic priorities um, late in the spring, like we're doing tonight. So for this budget, the strategic priorities were set last May, of uh, May of 2017, and department staff then aligned their continuous improvement plans with those strategic priorities. The board met in work sessions for this year in, in August and September and set budget targets then in November, which provided direction for staff in preparing our program efficiency, abandonment, and redirection narratives that describe needed adjustments to meet budget targets and complete the work on our strategic priorities. The levy was approved in December, and that set the tax levy portion of the um, revenue for this budget, and our pair summaries were approved by the school board in February. We then prepared our final budget, re which reflects board approved adjustments, and we monitored the impact of the legislative session. And just to say out loud, since we were not in a regular biennial funding year, all the activity, including the governor's veto of the supplemental budget bill in May, did not impact our budget planning. The budget presented in the school board um, documents tonight is the same as the budget we, we discussed at the June 5th work session. 
It includes all of the items and the organizational complements document that transparently reflects the impact of budget adjustments. So the budget that we recommend this evening is the culmination of that year-long process, and we will continue the process for next year's budget as well. Now we'll provide information regarding the fiscal year 2019 budgets. The budgets that will be adopted are for all funds, the general operating transportation, food and nutrition services, community service, capital land proceeds, and debt service OPEB. In this presentation, we'll provide detailed information about the general operating transportation fund because it makes up the majority of the overall budgets. Details of the budgets were discussed at that June 5th work session and are included in the online school board meeting materials. The fiscal year 2019 general transportation fund revenues are budgeted to increase 3.36% compared to the fiscal year 2018 revised budget. One of the largest increases was in general education aid due to a funding formula enhancement of 2% and a projected increase of 238 adjusted average daily membership students or adjusted ADMs. So total adjusted ADMs are estimated at 21,165 for fiscal year 2019. The second largest revenue increase was in the area of special education for $2.5 million. This increase was due to prior year adjustments for fiscal year 2017, which impact our fiscal year 2018 revenues, and an increase in the fiscal year 2019 estimates. The fiscal year 2019 general transportation fund expenditures are budgeted to increase 3.35% compared to the fiscal year 2018 revised budget. This is lower than our recent expenditure trend growth of 3.75%. Through board direction and discussion, we lowered the trend to 3.25%. The budget tonight is slightly higher due to a one-time tithe dissolution payment being paid out of existing fund balance. Included in the proposed adopted fiscal year 2019 budget are the February 20th board approved adjustments that net to a zero change. Through the long-range financial planning process for fiscal year 2019, the board approved redeploying budget capacity of $521,000 from non-instructional areas within the budget. The net effect of the revenue and expenditure budget variance on the proposed general operating transportation fund budget results in an anticipated operating deficit of $3 million for fiscal year 2019. The fiscal year 2019 ending fund balance is projected to be 25.12% of annual expenditures, or $60.7 million. The proposed fund balance is $2.9 million higher than was anticipated back in February. Board policy recommends a minimum fund balance of 5%, which we are in compliance with for this proposed budget. This slide is a summary of all five fund, five fund budgets to be adopted for fiscal years 2019. The general transportation fund shown in the blue column has already been discussed and is included for comparison purposes only. The food and nutrition services fund is the red column. Revenues for food and nutrition services are projected to increase 2.31% for fiscal years 2019. Overall, the food and nutrition service fund is projecting a planned increase of 125,000. The community service fund is the green column. Overall, community service is projecting a decrease in fund balance of 923,000. The 3.16% increase in revenue will be applied to the 5.68% increase in expenditures. The main reasons for the increase in revenue and expenditures are due to projected increases in early childhood family education and school readiness programs. The capital land proceeds fund is the purple column. The increase in revenue can be attributed to the voter-approved inflationary increase in the capital technology levy and E-rate increases, which are partially offset by a decrease in operating capital and lease levy. This together with the 1.28% increase in expenditures results in a $748,000 planned deficit in the capital land proceeds fund. The debt service fund is the orange column. The revenue increase of 8.77% reflects the required levies for ongoing debt service payments. The 67.11% increase in expenditures reflects the required annual principal and interest payments for outstanding debt. The fund balance is projected to be $3.2 million at the end of June 30th, 2019. 
The action item tonight is the recommended adoption of the fiscal year 2019 budgets for all funds. The adoption means that the budget was prepared in accordance with board direction. Thank you. Any questions, directors? Mr. Chair? Yes, Director Burgett. Um, this brief summary doesn't really, you know, go into all of the amount of work that went in behind it. So I just wanted to thank um, Kelly, Mike, and Cindy, and your staff, and Patricia, of course, with about all the work that's gone into this throughout the year, um, and, and all of the updates that we continue to get, and how public it is and transparent. Um, I think that really helps to build trust with the community. And so when, when and if um, there's levy discussions or tax discussions, they know that they can trust the numbers they see and that we're doing the absolute best we can with, their, with the, uh, the public's money. So thank you for all the work that goes in throughout the year. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Director Burgett. Director Craig. Director Douglas. Uh, I wanted to comment and... Uh, uh, as Director Burgett said, there's a lot of work that's going into this. Not only a lot of work behind the scenes for months and months and months, but also a lot of the work that is done in the public work sessions, where there is a lot of back and forth and discussion from the board. You may not see that here tonight. You'll see, you know, yays or nays, but uh, a lot of the work rolling up your sleeves, uh, asking way too many questions, uh, arguing, and, and, and coming to consensus comes in those public work sessions. So uh, I, I just wanted to, to ensure everybody, while a vote may be probably simple tonight, uh, a lot of effort has gone into the discussion, into the reading of the 200 and some page document, I think it is. So, uh, uh, and uh, I even found a little error in it today, again. <laughs> so uh, uh, they are being read, they are being looked at. There's a lot of effort and work that goes into it. And I want to thank you and uh, the entire staff that, uh, that pulls these together. So uh, any other questions? All right, with that, uh, I will make a motion to uh, accept the budget as presented uh, for approval uh, for, 20, uh, for fiscal year 2019. Do I have a second? Seconded. Second by Director Burgett. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes for nothing. Thank you. Next up is item 9C, which is the world's best workforce strategic plan, recommended priorities for 2018-2019, and that will be Dr. McGuire. Mr. Chair, this action is related to our mandated world's best workforce strategic plan. The strategic plan includes our mission, eight goals, five of which are mandated by law and three that are locally determined, four key strategies with work priorities or action steps attached to each of those strategies. There's one document related to this action item tonight which outlines the strategic plan and includes the mission and the goals, both those that are mandated and those that are locally determined, strategies and recommended work priorities for 2018-2019. Each school district, you'll remember, in the state of Minnesota is required by law to have a world's best workforce strategic plan, which we submit to the Minnesota Department of Education. And in addition, the plan is aligned with School Board Policy 616, World's Best Workforce. In Osseo area schools, we review progress on each of those work priorities throughout the year at public school board work sessions and at regular school board meetings. The recommended work priorities were reviewed by the school board at the June 5th work session and they are presented tonight um, at your direction for your approval. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. McGuire. Are there any comments? Or, uh, well, let's, let's first, uh, let's make a... Uh, uh, I'll make a motion to accept uh, the, the strategic plan recommended uh, priorities for 2018-2019. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Second by Director Douglas. Uh, any discussion? No? Uh, no? You're going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I'll say yeah, something yeah. instead yeah. while yeah. Director Burgett uh, collects his thoughts. Uh, again, a, a lot of work went into discussing these at work sessions. Uh, and, and looking at uh, pros and cons of different items and trying to stay the course on a lot of init initiatives that we've already been going forth. Uh, with the interim superintendents coming in, 
being able to stay on a steady course uh, for this year uh, is a very good plan. And, and when we do have a new leader coming in, uh, we will work with them to revisit and review everything that, that is on there. Uh, but uh, that is where we're going with it for now. So uh, any other discussion? That I'll take a vote. Uh, all in favor uh, of the motion to accept the uh, priorities and strategic plan for 2018-2019, say aye. 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 Uh, nay. None. So or opposed. None. Uh, so the motion passes for nothing. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda uh, are gifts to the district totaling $182,072.57. Uh, do I have uh, do I have a motion to or will someone make a motion to accept those gifts? So moved. So moved by Director Craig. Is there a second? Second. Second by Director Douglas. Any discussion? Well, uh, I would like to uh, thank. Uh, there's a lot of things on here, and, and that's always good when people are giving us money. So I appreciate that. There are. Uh, PTOs and churches and businesses and associations and, and private individuals uh, that are giving us uh, quite a bit of money to do specific things to help our students and I want to thank everyone that's doing that uh, tonight I wanted to call out uh, one in particular uh, we are undergoing a, a refresh of the uh, the basswood gym floor I believe as part of our long-term facility management and uh, a great partner, the Osseo Maple Grove Basketball Association, came to us and said, if you're going to do that, we would like to pay for an upgraded floor uh, because we're using it quite a bit and we're you know, uh, partnering with the school district. So they have given us a very generous gift of $53,200 to install uh, a, um, what is it, a multi-use floor instead of the standard gym floor. It will be used uh, for their basketball program, but it will also be used uh, throughout the day by 1,100 and some kids uh, to to run and play and scream on all day long. So uh, I wanted to call that out and thank you to uh, uh, Osseo uh, Maple Grove Basketball Association for that generous gift. Uh, so with that, uh, let's take a vote on accepting all $182,072.57 in gifts. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Nay, uh, the, uh, it is generally uh, or graciously accepted uh, on a vote of four to zero. Thank you. So item number 10 uh, are informational items. Uh, and 10A is the first reading of policy 707, non-instructional operations, transportation of students revised. Tim Palmatier. Thank you, Chair Estafi, school board members, and Dr. McGuire. Um, I, will, uh, I will introduce uh, a first reading on both policies, if, uh, if you'll bear with me. As Director Burgett reported earlier this meeting, there are two policies on the agenda for first reading tonight. Those are policies 708, transportation of students, and policy 520, student surveys. Policy 708, um, Portions of this policy are required by Minnesota law concerning student safety and student code of conduct, for example. Is that 708 or 707? 707. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I added an, an one on there, but uh, <laughs> thank you for catching that. 707. I was on vacation, um, so maybe I'll give I'm you a that. little bit uh, you know, <laughs> foggy in the brain. Um, anyway, portions of this policy are required by Minnesota law. Uh, particularly those uh, portions requiring uh, student safety training and student code of conduct. The policy and accompanying appendices were last reviewed in the 2014-15 school year. The revisions recommended by the policy committees for first reading are intended to address some of the following concerns. Clarifying parent responsibility to provide transportation for extracurricular activities where the district is not providing transportation. Clarifying expectations for students and parents requesting uh, to transport their students when transportation is available for extracurricular activities, clarifying the process for students to obtain approval for personally providing transportation to students um, or for staff uh, when providing transportation to students in emergency situations, modifying the process for parents to request bus stop changes and to appeal district determinations, setting the timelines for providing bus safety training to students, affirming parents' responsibility for getting their students to bus stops and for monitoring student behavior at bus stops, 
clarifying student behavioral expectations on buses, establishing requirements regarding access to and use of seat belts on class three vehicles, and establishing a requirement consistent with state law that buses possessing video or audio recording devices provide written notice of the use of these recording devices. And then next uh, for consideration for first read tonight is policy 520. Uh, this pertains to student surveys. This is uh, a new proposed policy. Minnesota statute requires the board adoption of a policy addressing this type of issue. Consistent with uh, new requirements of Minnesota statute, the proposed policy addresses issues related to notification to parents about district survey, the district survey policy, uh, and advanced notification of specific anti anticipated student surveys, parent opportunity to review surveys, and to opt out, uh, opt their children out of participating in surveys, and prohibitions against imposing an academic penalty or other penalty on a student who opts out of the survey. In addition, the policy also incorporates um, a number of requirements that already are in existence uh, pursuant to federal regulations and uh, FERPA under federal law. First reading begins a four week period for reaction to the proposed policy changes by concerned groups or individuals. After the four week period, the school board may adopt a policy after a second reading. The proposed policies are available on the school district website with the agenda for this meeting. Comments may be directed to the school board or to myself, general counsel, and comments on this policy or policies uh, may be provided online from the school board's policy and procedures website on the school district website. Good. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Palmatier? Okay. We do not have to take any action at this time. It was for information only. Uh, next, we will move on to uh, 10C, the announcements. Uh, no one was scheduled for that, or I will read those. The school board at negotiation strategy meeting will be held Tuesday, June 19, 2018, at 7 p.m. in room N10. At the ESC, this meeting will be closed to the public. A special closed meeting will be held Tuesday, June 19, 2018, at 7.30 p.m. in room N10 at the ESC. This meeting will be closed to the public. And a regular school board meeting will be held Tuesday, July 31st, 2018, at 6 p.m. in the boardroom at the ESC. This meeting is open to the public. Uh, with that, I will bring the gavel down on Kate McGuire's uh, last last board meeting more than 400 mr chair more than 400 oh, uh, more than 400 over the last 14 years congratulations and uh judy how many you you must have quite a few also have you counted no i'm afraid too <laughs> <laughs> and, and kim we've had oh she's already left but that's maybe 25 a year for three years so 75 so uh at uh let's see at 6 15 do i have a motion to adjourn 7 15 do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. So moved by uh, Director Craig. Uh, second? Seconded. By Director Burgett. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned at 715.